And so let's have a look at uh, how we can solve discrete logarithms. So the method we'll look at in this presentation is the baby step, giant step algorithm. So discrete logs are used fairly extensively within cryptography, uh, such as in the Diffie-Hellman key exchange method and also in elliptic curve uh, Diffie-Hellman key exchange. It's also used in L-gamma encryption. And as we'll find, it's a difficult problem. Uh, it's a hard problem to solve for existing computers. So in the presentation, we'll try to understand uh, discrete logs and what they are, how we pick the G value, and then we'll look at the baby step, giant step method. And uh, so this is the the standard format that we have for uh, discrete logarithms g to the power of x mod p that what makes it discrete this looks like a logarithm here uh, problem uh, but then we bring in the mod p and it makes it a discrete log so we have g the generator to the power of x mod p gives us y this is defined as a finite field because uh, because of this mod operation which is the remainder after a division of uh, g of x uh, divided by p, uh, we will only get values between 0 and p and minus 1 from here. And then it will repeat round after that. So it's cyclic in its nature. The great thing with this operation is that uh, we can actually perform our normal mathematics, add, subtract, multiply, divide, and so on, uh, as long as we make everything mod p. So the problem that we have is to find the value of x, uh, given the value of y, g, and p. And this is an extremely hard problem for a computer because uh, we would have to search through uh, many different values of x to find the one value of x to cause uh, y for this. If we make p extremely large, such as a 1024-bit prime number, we would have 2 to the power of 1024 uh, different values to search through for x, uh, which will take an extremely long uh, length of time to be able to find it. We can have even larger prime numbers if we're still worried about our security. So not all values of g will actually work. What we want is to make sure that every g value up to p minus 1 will give a unique y value. Uh, some g values will not uh, give us a unique output and we can end up with more than one x value giving us a, a defined y value. So what we end up with is what's called a cyclic group mod p. And this is the basic method that we use to be able to find the generator or the g value to make sure that x will always give us a unique output. And we have an example of this here. So for a prime number of 37, the possible g values are 2, 5, 13, 15, and so on. We typically use a smallish value of g so that it doesn't become too large uh, there. So often it's 2 or 3 is, is our generator value, but we see we couldn't use 3 in this case. And the reason for this is that uh, we need it to be cyclic and to cover all the possible values from 1 to the prime number. So if we take 7 and we plug in uh, g, which is 2 to the power of x, mod 7, then this is the output that we get when we plug in our, our x values. We can see here we're not covering all the possible outputs because there's no 3 value here. So this isn't possible. When we look at uh, 3 as a generator, we can see here that it cycles through all the possible outputs from 1 to 6. And then we'll return back here to cycle through again. So this one is possible. This one isn't. It's not, it's not cycling with the possible values. And this one is Okay, so we make sure that uh, we pick a value of uh, g so that uh, the, the outputs of, of y will cover all the possible values of x uh, to give a unique value. 
Okay, so the problem that we have is how do we find uh, the value of x and for for uh, this this problem. So normal uh, logarithms, what we have is we have h is equal to a to the power of x, and then we take the inverse log uh, of a for h. So if we have 10 to the power of 4, we take the, we 10 to the power of 4, x is 4 in this case. If we were using a log to the base 10, which is this here, then we would take the inverse log 10 of 10,000, and the answer is 4. Okay, so that's the standard way that we do our logs. In the baby step, giant step, what we do is that uh, we go through a series of uh, operations. So let's take an example here of uh, 20 uh, is equal to 5 to the power of x mod 53. These are small numbers, of course, but it's just really to illustrate. And we need to find the value of x, which will give a value of 20. So our g value is 5, our h value is 20, and our prime number is 53 in this case, and we want to find x. So the first thing that we do is that we find that we we find the square root of p minus one. In this case, it's seven. And we only have to now store seven values for our baby step part. These are then ordered. We calculate a g to the power of one to seven, take mod p, and we order them like this. So this is the g to the power of i mod p, and then comma i. So we'll see zero, one, uh, two, three, four, five, uh, six, and then seven. Okay, and for each of these uh, values in the count, we then calculate g to the power of i mod p. So we can see we've got one, three, five, uh, 51, 42, 43, 19, 25. So it's good, there's no repeated values, so it looks like this generator value is okay. So there's zero, it says five to the power of zero, gives us one, that's that one. Five to the power of one gives us five, and there it's there. And five to the power of two gives us 25, two. Okay, so we end up now with this table uh, called the baby table that will then uh, allow us to be able to then use the big step. So these are now the pairs that we'll take from 0 to the square root of p minus 1. We then compute uh, g to the power of minus n, which is this here, to give us our c value. We then search through h times the c to the power of x mod p until we find the match, and then our result becomes this here. Okay, it's the j value that we found uh, times the n value. This is now our big step, our giant step, and we take the value that we have in our table. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so 25 and 53, 25 and 53. There we go. So we can see here, there's the values that we get. And uh, we end up with a value of 11. If we put 5 to the power of 11, mod 53, hopefully we'll get 20 back again. So let's have a look at that. So print 5 to the power of uh, 23 mod 53, just check that. So it's 5 to the power of 11, sorry, 11. And we end up with 20, which is, which is correct. Okay, so this, this method here, uh, if you're interested, here's the, <coughs> here's the code. <coughs> that that will uh, complete this.
OK, so there's the code that we're actually using uh, for this. We take the baby step here and then we do the large steps here and it should solve for the value of x as we've seen it should work. OK, so this is an example here, 5 to the power of x mod 53. We end up uh, is equal to 22 in this case. Then we end up with this value here and we just check uh, for the result back and everything is fine. OK. Uh, so why is this such a, a difficult uh, problem? Well, if we look at, uh, at, a, at a prime number, so if I had a prime number of 1024 bits, that's the number of numbers that I would have to search through. I appreciate that not all of these will be prime numbers, but that's all the possible numbers there are to take us up to 1024. If we had 2048, it would be absolutely a massive number. So if we now try, if we take our values, equal to uh, G, a value of g and we'll take a prime number equal to say 2 to the power of uh, 128 so it's a relatively small value here okay so that that would be our prime number if we now look at the numbers that we have to search through OK, so this, this will be our initial calculation. Just, uh, just need to import math. That will be the number of values that we need to store for a 128-bit prime number. So that is a massive amount of, uh, of memory that we need to store those, those pairs uh, in, in there. So that's only with a 128-bit if we went up to 512-bit prime number, then that's the number. <laughs> so that's more than all of the memory and the whole of the planet uh, that we would actually have to uh, store. OK, so that's the reason that uh, discrete logarithms are such a difficult uh, problem and that it would be extremely difficult to be able to store all those values to be able to crack and then search uh, through them. OK, so that's been an outline of how we solve discrete logarithms. Uh, so a core part of this is obviously to make sure that the prime numbers that we select are secure and it's not possible for someone to find the value of x for our uh, values. There was a case uh, within the, the Diffie-Hellman method where it was possible to pre-compute massive tables and then do a, a lookup. So it's important that, uh, that, that the values that are created are truly random.